Well, uh, I'll just also thanks, uh, say thanks for the inviting here to Czech Republic. It's uh, all times uh, good to come out and meet some other people. And uh, in the time where I chose to start up with robot milking, I was also visit some uh, uh, some other farms and some other countries to see what it was uh, we will have to start up with. I have here a presentation uh, uh, from the farm. So, um, uh, yeah, my name is uh, Jens Jensen and. Uh, I run a farm in, uh, in Denmark together with uh, my little brother. And um, my brother uh, run about 950 hectares. Uh, he grow uh, grass and uh, maize for silage. And uh, he have barley and wheat and canola and grass seed for, for sale. Uh, in 2011, I went into a partnership with my father. Uh, the the barn here is from 2010, so it was just built up before I uh, get into the partnership. In 2017, my father went out from the partnership, and uh, my little brother uh, went in. Uh, the daily production is uh, uh, is that uh, I'm running uh, 605 uh, milking cows. And it will be about 550 milking cows at the time, and it's only in all milking is uh, robot milking is in this barn here. Uh, in uh, the back of the barn here, I have the silage storage. Here I have the uh, dry cows and the high pregnant uh, heifers, and I have uh, the youngest heifers is an, on another farm uh, two kilometers away. Over here I have a calf barn for the smallest calf until four or five months old. I have um, a production on the cow uh, for uh, 43 kilo of uh, in the corrected milk. Uh, and uh, in average, the last 12 months, I have uh, 13 and a half thousand kilo per cow in average. The cows is uh, located uh, in uh, five group for milking. And um, this group down here, it's uh, a straw area for a, a pregnant cow one to two weeks before expected uh, birth. Um, we have some single boxes up here. Uh, we use them uh, for maybe 70 or 80 percent of the, the, the births. Um, some of the cows will give birth here in the straw if we're not on the farm or something like that. But the most of them is here to make a little bit uh, uh, a quiet place for the cow uh, uh, in this time. After this, we, have, we bring the cow for first milking along the wall here and into this robot. And if the cow is looking well and is fresh, she go directly to the big straw area here, where the cow stay between 7 and 14 days, uh, depend of uh, age and um, about how they're looking, are they fresh, or how uh, it's uh, decide how long time they, they will stay here. Uh, if, if we have a cow who is, is not fresh, we put her back to the box again for uh, 12 hours, and after this we take the same decision again, go to the box or stay in the straw. Uh, when they have stayed in the straw this uh, 17, uh, seven, 7 to, to 14 days, uh, the robot automatically uh, uh, separates the cow to this uh, startup group here. In this group, they stay for, from this uh, 7 14 days until about 30 days. Um, in this group, I also have some of my oldest cow because I think it's a little bit uh, it's good for them that it's close to milking, close to feeding close to sleeping. So uh, it's a little bit extra welfare for the oldest cow. They can stay in this group if, if it's necessary. But all the other cows stay uh, about uh, uh, to 30 days after born. Uh, in this group here, I have uh, all the old cows, second lactation and up. They stay there uh, from 30 days to 180 days. This group here is my first lactation group, so it's uh, o only young cows, and they stay in this group from this 30 days, 20, 30 days, what time they arrive, and uh, until dry off time. This group here is for the old cow from 180 days and until dry off. They stay in this group here. 
And the reason why I have these two groups separated uh, and not mixed uh, is uh, a feeding. Uh, uh, it's because of the feeding. I feed uh, here with a, a lower, uh, with a ration with a lower energy. And the robots, um, we have about 3.2 milkings per cow per day in average. 1.35 refusals, and we have a connections uh, attempting on 1.3, and we have uh, failures on 1.5, and this uh, fa failures uh, will mean that we have one, uh, uh, we have 1.5 uh, cow with failures per robot per day, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, we are happy about this uh, amount. The order health in the last three months is 160,000, um, and we have uh, this uh, bacterial uh, counting on 4,000. The reproduction data uh, is uh, that we have an insemination rate on 59%, a pregnancy rate on 44%, and it uh, makes a reproduction eff effectivity on 0.26. My first lactation cow uh, in this group here, I start up uh, 90 days after birth to uh, inseminate. And on the uh, second lactation and uh, up, I start about 60 uh, to 70 days after born uh, time. And uh, it depends a little bit about the, the milk uh, yield on the, on the cow and uh, also about the, uh, how is the cow looking, is she have enough energy to get pregnant. And uh, I've been asked a little bit about my, uh, my, my uh, next five years on the farm, what will happen. And it's uh, still optimize uh, the, the farm and the setup as it is today. It's uh, to, to raise up the, the, the production on the cow in a healthy way and, uh, and uh, reach a, a high life production on the cow. Uh, in this moment here, we, uh, we have about... Uh, a life production on about uh, 50,000 uh, kilo on all the cow who is get slaughtering or who die from the farm. Um, the work on, uh, organization, um, we have uh, six uh, people on the work schedule uh, for, the, for the, this barn here. Uh, and uh, my wife, who is sitting here, she is uh, working part-time on the farm and she's managed uh, the calf barn. And uh, I have a man with uh, 30 hours a week uh, who is uh, mixing food for all the barns. And uh, uh, myself, I do the hoof framing and the insemination, and I do the maintenance uh, work on the robot. And the work plan is uh, make so uh, 5.30 in the morning we start in the barn, and uh, two people start, one man start in this group here, and one man start in these three groups here. So one man managed two robots, and one, man's, uh, one man managed uh, nine robots. So it's tell all about the work, where is the work, it's here, near the fresh cow, as we know. Um, yeah, so cow who is working well, yeah, one man can take care of many cows. Uh, and uh, they start, as I say, uh, 5.30, and uh, 8 o'clock, one of the people go to the calf barn, so one man is alone until 11, 12 o'clock. 2 o'clock, two men start again, and 4 o'clock, one of the men go to the calf barn, uh, and one man stay alone until 6 o'clock, and in the night, I have uh, three and a half hour from 9.30, I have uh, one man in the farm, to if coming if there comes some new calf, give calls from for this cow uh, calves and uh, uh, check about all cows is okay and collect the cows to robot if some cows have forget to make them a visit. Uh, alarms uh, from the robots it's uh, normally for me uh, because I'm not a part of the work plan, so it's a better that I get a, an alarm in the night and I not have to wake up early in the morning also. Um, 
And if an uh, alarm arrives uh, when there is people on work, I just send them an SMS and write that they have to take a look on this robot. Uh, I, I guess I have about maybe two, two nights alarm uh, a month. And about the, the work management, um, I have not uh, many big plans writing what time we do what and everything. Uh, I better like to, to have a plan for what are we doing. If, for example, we have a cow with high temperature, if a cow go down in rumination, uh, what acts are we take on this problem? Uh, because it's uh, the work... Uh, amount of work is very different from day to day. You can have one day with eight newborn calves, so therefore you have to use nearby all your time here. And another day you can have zero calves, so therefore you have to, to make some of all the extra works on the farm. Uh, for example, cleaning jobs or something like that. Uh, but we have uh, uh, what I will call some farm rules, uh, like I said before, with, uh, if we have a cow with high temperature, we know exactly what we do, and we do the same, all the, the people who work on the farm. We also know what time are we uh, uh, clean the water trough around the farm, and what time are we give uh, a straw in the, the area here. So a little bit schedule we have, but, but not so much. Um, and we also have some uh, 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 some plans for what time are we uh, bring the, the I have a room here a milk separation room uh, where uh, the milk from the calf uh, come from the robot to a milk trailer so we have a plan also what time are we uh, move this milk trailer to the calf barn. Um, if I should tell you a little bit about uh, what hardware we are using in the farm, uh, I have a cow collector. A, a cow locator system and uh, it will uh, say that I know exactly where the cow is. There's some uh, antenna around the farm so in two meters I know exactly what specific cow is uh, on the farm. This system we use uh, when we collect cows for robots, when I do the inspiration and also if we have to find a special cow, maybe she's milk with failures, maybe uh, she's uh, starting to uh, get sick or something like that, we go directly to a cow, we don't use time to walk around to find a cow, we go directly to the cow. Uh, then I have a need up uh, responders on uh, all the cows in the barn, but I also have need up uh, responders of, uh, on all my hyphas older than 12 months, uh, and all the data is uh, uh, connected to G4C, so I have all data in, the, in one system. Then I have the MQC, uh, C, uh, uh, milk quality tester on, uh, on the robots, and special this group here, uh, where I have the fresh cow and the startup group, it's very important. Then uh, after day number four, it starts to calculate this uh, cell account, and I know if a, a cow uh, milk start up uh, early in lactation with uh, a, a, a high cell account, I can take a milk test, I can send it to the laboratorium, and I get an answer, what, what bacteria uh, does we have in the milk? Uh, does she need a treatment, or can she uh, do, uh, do the, the treatment by herself? Uh, I have two feeding types in the robot. I have uh, pellets who come from these two silos here. I concentrate with 24% uh, of pr protein, and I have uh, cracked barley in a silo here. Uh, and it go also directly to the robots uh, after cracking. Um, it make uh, it make it possible to make some uh, different feeding plans. Uh, I have a, a for example a, a special feeding plan for my slaughtering cows, and I just push uh, and I just make in the program. So as long the cow make uh, give a good uh, amount of milk, she's just on the same feeding plan like all other cows. But at the time she start to drop uh, down with the milk. She's uh, changed a little bit uh, less concentrate and more uh, cracked barley, so uh, I can uh, 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 feed up the, the cows ready for slaughtering. Yeah. Uh, and the software, uh, I have of course this uh, T4C program, and um, I also in Denmark we have a program we call the DMS. And it's a, a management program also. Uh, but these two programs have a, 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 a link. Uh, between them, so when we push some data inside one program, it go automatically to the other program and also otherwise. 
Um, yeah. And in this group here, uh, we have uh, all first milking cow, uh, first milking on new cows after born is uh, happened in this robot here. So there we have uh, make a, a special uh, 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 system to put the milk directly to a bag. We never put fresh milk into a bucket because uh, maybe it's not clean enough or something like that. So therefore this uh, milk goes directly into a bag and we put it to the calf barn and uh, check the quality and after this we have a colostrum bank in the freezer where, uh, where we store it all the, the colostrum for new calf. Um, and I have uh, write a little bit bow, uh, down about um, what it was the changing, what, what change did I see when I changed the robot milking. Uh, we had this barn with the 200 cows uh, before and um, yeah, it was a small barn, there was not so much light, not so much air, and we milked two times a day. So when we changed to the, uh, a, a new barn, a lot of air, a lot of light, a lot of space, and the extra milking, uh, the first uh, two, three years, they go from this 10,000 kilo of milk to about 12 and a half, 13,000 kilo of milk. So it was pretty fast uh, level up uh, the, the amount of milk on the cow. Um, and especially the last uh, three years, I have worked to bring down my cell account, so I have made some uh, uh, extra focus on this, and um, I have uh, uh, bring it down with about uh, 100,000 in, in cell account, so now we we with about this 160,000 uh, in average. Uh, when we built this uh, robot barn here, uh, we nearby make a, a, a triple up with, with cows from 200 to 550 uh, cows. Uh, so uh, uh, in this uh, reason, we not bring down the amount of uh, employees. We, we added more employees to the farm, of course, we get uh, more animals. Um, but what I see now when we have get this uh, robotic uh, barn is it, it, it is a little more easy to, to find employees uh, for farm work. It's it's very hard job in Denmark, especially in, in, the, in this moment here. Uh, but if we search for, for workers for robotic, robotic farm, it's more easy. Uh, the work schedule is better uh, and, and all the, the most of the hard work is, is, is not on the farm more. We also chose to use a little bit more educated uh, staff on the farm because, as I say, uh, there is many times uh, that people is working alone on the farm, so therefore they have to take a decision by themselves about uh, uh, if there is some problem with a cow or something like that. So, um, yeah, and. Uh, before, I have make a little, uh, make a little bit calculation about how, mu how much milk we produce per working hour. And before, we were milking in a double eight side by side uh, milking parlor. And uh, in this time, we produce about 250 kilo of milk per working hour. And uh, now we're producing about 700 uh, kilo of milk per working hour. Uh, so it, it's, it's tell a little bit about that it's possible to, to bring a lot of more milk out from, from the uh, farm. I also know that this two uh, times eight milking system before was maybe a little too small for, for 200 cows, but it's, it's the result of, of the robot barn. And I also think what it says is that when one man can manage all these cows here, it's 450 cows with, with uh, with with all work, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty good job. Uh, so so cow who is who's a long way from from birth and just uh, in the lactation, they're just running in a system like this. That's not many problems. So um, so it's like all other system, all the work have to be around this uh, area here, about uh, birth time. And the first day after, and in the start, the first month, if we have a, a healthy cow uh, after the, the in this period here, we have a uh, in the most of the time a healthy way in the rest of the lactation.
Hello again. Uh, this time um, I want to uh, tell a little bit about the routines we have um, on our farm. And uh, if we start from the beginning, when uh, we have a, a cow who born, it was down here in this uh, single box as well, it was happened. Uh, the first milking is in this uh, robot. Before we uh, let the cows to, uh, to the robot, we, uh, we take a check. We, uh, all cows who uh, stay in the single boxes is feeding in, uh, in a little feed bin, so we can, uh, with our eyes, uh, check the, the feed intake. Uh, so we are pretty sure that uh, they are okay uh, to, uh, to, to go to the production, uh, if I can say it in this way. Uh, we have to pay attention if, if, uh, if the, food, uh, the food intake is, is uh, too low, and and we have to uh, to do uh, uh, something uh, uh, to to add some uh, uh, sugar for him or some uh, for the cow or something like that. But it's uh, one of the the first thing who happened. It we check is she eating as we expect. Uh, before she leave the box, we also take the temperature uh, manually, uh, so we know about uh, there is uh, some uh, milk fever uh, close to close to to come to the cow, or also if, if there's high temperature, we know something about, we have to be, uh, 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 we have to look a little bit extra, maybe there is a, an uh, infection on the way. After this, we bring it to the robot, and uh, they, uh, she, she goes to the big straw, if she's fresh and good, if not, she comes back to the box, so we can control this feed intake again. Um, all the cows is uh, milked. Uh, we prefer to milk all newborn cows after four or six hours uh, to, uh, to be sure that we have a good quality on the colostrum. Uh, we, we know if we wait too long time, the, the, the quality of the colostrum will went down. Uh, all uh, new uh, hyphas who are born is, uh, have not been trained to the robot before. It's first time they visit the robot is, uh, is after they have given birth. So uh, what we do is that we are almost all time two people uh, to uh, milk and scan the hyphas first time. One to control the robot and manage the X-link and the scanning. And one man to keep a hand on the back of uh, the hypha to be sure that she is uh, quiet and calm and, uh, and like to stay in the robot. Uh, our experience is that if they have a bad experience, if they go too much forward and backward in the robot and if they kick too much and everything, and they not feel, feel well in the robot, it will go many days and even weeks uh, before she, she, she come by herself and she's, she stay uh, quiet in the robot. Otherwise, if she have a good experience, it go uh, uh, pretty fast. She will come fast to the robot and she will stay uh, quiet in the robot and uh, nothing uh, will happen. So, uh, so use uh, a little bit more time on the first one, two milkings and it will pay, pay back many times uh, later. Um, I have uh, every Tuesday, I have uh, the pregnant control of uh, the cow. All cows who is uh, between 35 and 42 days since insemination is uh, bring to the separations area and, uh, uh, and, and the pregnant uh, check are done. Um, the pregnant check uh, uh, is done by a, a man from our breeding company. Um, in the same time, we also bring uh, cows who uh, uh, not have been uh, show uh, any heat, uh, so we will just check up, uh, is there some problem with this cow, or is she run out of uh, cyclos, or, or what, is, what is wrong? Uh, and if, if we find uh, something uh, who needs uh, the, a veterinarian check, we just put her to, uh, to one, uh, one, a list, and after this, we know that we, we have to bring it to separation on, uh, on uh, Friday, where the veterinarian come. Every, every second Friday, veterinarian come in. And we, we do what we have to do uh, if we have some cows to check or something like that. Um, on Monday, I do uh, uh, dry off. And uh, the, this 
dry off uh, uh, system, I think with robots it's, it's pretty easy because we have two things we can adjust. We can adjust how often can they visit the robot and how much uh, extra feet that did they uh, have in the, robo in the robot. So if we bring the, the if we bring the uh, visits down uh, uh, on, the, on the cow and we bring also the feet down, they will start uh, what time we want to, to dry off themselves. So, uh, so it it's, works pretty easy. So the only thing we do is put them in separation Monday morning. In same time, I make a hoof trim in the box with the cow. In, and when they are in the box, I, uh, in the hoof trim box, I uh, do vaccination for rotor coronavirus. To, to uh, prevent uh, this uh, virus uh, in the calf barn. And um, from data from the MQC, the cell account system in the robot, I also have made a decision what, uh, what of the cow, uh, which of the cows did I need to make a medical treatment on. Uh, uh, normally I have so more than 250,000 in cell account on old cows and 150,000 on the first lactation cow. It's uh, the, the limit uh, where I do nothing or I make a treatment. We not uh, use uh, sealing of the other only, uh, not on all cow, only on the cow we make treatment on. Um, yeah, and after we finish with this uh, hoof trim and the vaccination and uh, maybe a treatment, treatment if it's necessary, we bring the, the uh, dry cows uh, directly to the to the old barn where we have the dry cows. So we, we're not milking them one time a day in in some days or something like that. It's just directly to the to the barn for dry cows. When we finish with this, we start our uh, Monday as our big move around with cow days. Uh, it's the only day we move with cows, and uh, what the first thing we do is we find. Uh, uh, seven, eight cows in this group here, depends on how much place I have in this group, move them through the uh, hoof trim box, make the hoof trim, and out in the group. After this, I find 10, 15 cows here, and uh, some of them is first, like chasing cow, they make hoof trim, go directly to this group, other cow, uh, the old cow, make hoof trim, go through this separation, and back to this group here. So, when we move cow, we make hoof trim. So it will mean that we, we have uh, three hoof trim in lactation on uh, old cow and uh, uh, three hoof trim on lactation in, uh, in the old cow and the two hoof trim in lactation with the uh, first lactation cow. And uh, more than this, if I have, uh, uh, when I do the inspiration, I walk around in, in all the groups and see all the cows every day. So if I see that I have a cow with a little bit digital dermatitis or something like that, I will add them to a list and I also bring them this Monday. So Monday is the moving uh, day and it's the hoof trim day. And uh, normally it's, uh, it's me do the hoof trim and I have a, a man uh, help me for three hours. So it's one and a half men do the hoof trim on the farm. Uh, and normally when we start at 8, 8.30, we'll be finished 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's, and we have taken this 30, 40 cows. Uh, so it's, uh, it worked uh, pretty well. And uh, where we quiet and slow, the, the, the good thing is we have the box here in the middle. And so, so the cows from the group, they cannot see what we are doing here. Because cows not like hoof trimming. Uh, so, so we stand uh, in a good place here. They cannot see what happens, so all cows in all the rest of the barn doesn't recognize what, uh, what we are doing. <coughs> in, uh, according to the, the hoof trim, in these two robots here, I have a, a, a hoof uh, washer. Uh, it can wash with uh, f uh, clean water, it can also add some uh, disinfection. Uh, normally it's enough with, with water, but if I have some bigger problem with digital or something like that, I can turn the disinfection on, but uh, the most of the year it's turned totally off, no water and, and nothing. But I have the opportunity to turn it on if I uh, need something for the, for the, to, to keep the, the, the hoof health in the top. And uh, more than this vaccination, we talk about the Rote Corona. Uh, this year, I have started to vaccinate with StartVac, 
to prevent uh, coli mastitis. The last three, four, five years, I have seen a little bit more coli mastitis in the summertime. I think uh, I have about 15 or 20s uh, uh, of these coli mastitis, and uh, it's a lot of work and it's hard for the cow, and yeah, it's it's not good. So, uh, so I want to see about I can I can have a little bit more easy. Uh, easy summer if I uh, if I use this vaccine. So, uh, but I I not have the result yet. I've just started up here for some months ago. Uh, so uh, it's what we we do vaccination. So it's only this these two vaccination we use. Um, about about test the the general health in the in the in the barn. We have uh, opportunity to to make uh, we make 11 times a year. We make a milk sample. Uh, for fat and protein, and in the same time, we can just ask them to be tested for salmonella or for uh, uh, party B. Uh, so, so it's uh, it's possible if we want it. If we have, uh, if we think it's there is something we need to to test for, we can do it on all cows. We can do it on some of the cows. Just do what we want. Uh, and and uh, one time a year, we are testing about uh, 10, 15 hyphas with blood test to screen the the farm for for salmonella so it's it what we we do with blood collection uh, every day uh, 9 30 the robots have one of the the washers in same time in the morning we um, go and wash the robot uh, on the arm and uh, on everything who touch the the cow and touch the udder uh, and it's also uh, uh, because of the bacteria. Uh, we want to bring all risk so low, so low that we can. Uh, so at this moment, it's with, with soap and uh, and foam and with brush, and we clean uh, with, with clean the arm totally down. The rest of the day, the robot cleaning will just be done with flushing air, uh, flushing water uh, without soap. So it's, it's but it's a good uh, thing, a good way for us to do it. We know every day 9:30 robot washing. Then we have to wash them with soap. Before we just do it one time a day when we have time. But it get a little problem because some days people uh, see ah we have a we have a busy day, so maybe they not get washing as good as we want. So therefore we have put it in the in the same time each day when the robot is not milking. They are washing, so uh, it's work uh, pretty good. Also on busy days. <clears throat> if I should change something uh, in uh, in the barn, uh, I want. I have this. I have an extra robot here. It's not on the. It's not on the map. But here I have an extra robot, and I have an extra one here, like like I have here. I want them on maybe on a line or in this way here, so I have a full functional separation still. It's right now. It's only the robot here closest to separation who can separate cows. So uh, yeah, it's one of the things. But I, I chose that a high, a higher uh, a robot capacity than the the barn was built for was more necessary for me than the separation. So it's the reason why it is like it is. And the other thing I want to, to change is uh, the straw area here for the pregnant cow. And for the startup uh, group, uh, have to be uh, maybe double size. It's much more easy to handle a, a big straw area. Uh, and sometime a year, when you have a big, uh, a big rush of of new calves and newborn cows, yeah, it's good to have some place here, uh, some extra place. So, so it's it's in my mind, it's it's a little small thing, but it's it's something I want to change if if I have to do it again. And for you, uh, those of you who not uh, have robots today uh, and think it maybe it could be something for you, uh, I think just uh, f f look how 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 are you feeling about working with Technic because there is a there is more Technic with robots than with an old uh, milking parlor, but but what we see many times and time after time is if the man who built the robot barn like to take care of cows, it will be a success. And it's what we see time after time. The, 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 the barns who not get a success with, robot, have success with robots is because 
people think when they get robots, they not have to take care of cows. It's the wrong way to think. You have to still to take care of cows. The robot just gives you a lot of information and milk your cows, but uh, it's ourselves who, who have to handle on it. So, uh, yeah. It uh, was uh, what I have for you. I just have some pictures from the farm, but uh, I would like if some of you have some question or something like that for me. Uh, but uh, I have a little bit, quest uh, little bit pictures here from, uh, from our farm. Right here we see uh, the, this cow locator system. This is the antenna. We have one here and we have one here. And our food uh, system, and in the top here we have four of these uh, breezers to uh, help us to to change the 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 air, especially in the summertime. Uh, yeah, the roof is uh, isolated, but in the summertime it can be pretty pretty hot in the farm, so so it's good to have extra ventilation. Yeah. And our Juno, yeah, we have had it from the beginning, so it's not easy to say how it will be without it, but uh, uh, in the, especially in the nights when we're not in the farm, it's pretty good that it just have the food close to the cow all the night, so it's a big, it's a big help, yeah. I bought one for my Hyphos barn also because it's, yeah, it's just easy that no matter what time you come, the feed is where it has to be. That's it for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you been thinking to buy a vector self-feeding system? Uh, not really at the moment, uh, but it's not because of the of the automatic feeding, because I think that have some uh, there's some good ideas and there's some good ideas for robot farm to have new food many times uh, a day. But I have this, uh, I have this f barn here with my hyphas, and that's also possible to bring the, the automatic feeding in this barn, but I also have the other farm for my hyphas. So I cannot be without uh, a trailer uh, mixer. So therefore I have to have a double uh, set up. So that's what I think a little bit about now. <laughs> yeah. Tak, máme. 6 minut, 5 minut, takže prostor na dotazy určitě je ještě. Takže pokud někdo máte, ještě. May I ask you, I don't see enough silos for the, uh, for the uh, food, footer, for the feeding. I think maybe it's the pictures. It is enough. There is five silos uh, with uh, 15 yeah. times uh, 75 meters, so... Okay. We have enough storage. Nikdo nic? Sorry, I don't remember if you if you told us before uh, how many how many people is working on your farm? Yeah. Uh, on the on the cows and the hyphas and calf, we have a, I have I have a six men uh, in the barn, and I have my wife as a, a part time, and I have a thirty uh, hours man for mixing food, but it's about the animals, so seven and a half men nearby to take care of the animals, and my brother who run the the fields and a little bit uh, contracting, he have about three four people depends of the season. Yeah. Já možná teda, pokud nikdo nemá, já bych se zeptal, uh, protože Jens dojí pomocí robotu už poměrně nějakou dobu, tak bych se zeptal, jestli používá chytré respondéry od začátku, po případě, uh, co ho přimělo k tomu, aby je začal používat, po případě, co ho přimělo k tomu, aby investoval i do toho lokalizačního systému, co má na farmě. I'm not here. Yes. Was it a question? Okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I just think it was some information. You have to say it again. Oh. Oh, 
You can just say it in a short version if this. <laughs> Mám to zopakovat? Asi jo, vidím, vidím pohled uh, překladatelek. Takže se zeptám ještě jednou. Uh, dojící mi roboty Jens dojí poměrně už dlouho. To znamená, moje asi první otázka, jestli začal s chytrými respondéry, po případě, co ho přimělo k tomu, aby do nich investoval. A taková druhá podotázka. Uh, Říkal, že používá lokalizační systém, tak aby přesně vyhledal pozici každý krávy. Zase, co ho přimělo k tomu, aby investoval do, do toho systému, jestli vlastně ta, řekněme, byla to nějaká investice, jestli se mu to třeba vrátilo právě, řekněme, třeba v počtu těch zaměstnanců, které tam má. Já. Yeah. <coughs> uh, First of all, the smart responders, we will start with a system from, uh, from SCR, and this system was uh, drawn by battery. So it was uh, a, a little bit uh, problem when this battery ran out, the cow could not be milked. So uh, that was the uh, reason why I changed to need up uh, system here for four or five years ago, to be sure that my cow could get, get milk if the battery ran out. Um, And the reason why I make the investment in, in cow locator was that when we, when we walk around in, uh, I just show you here. When we walk around, for example, when we have to collect cows, we start all times here, we go around and find the cows and bring here. But if you have to find five, eight cows and you have to go and look on the ear clips, Uh, you will get crazy in the head if in the beginning also, and uh, you will not could make other jobs when you walk around because you all times have to check ear clips. If you go in here and you see the first two cows stand here, the next three stand here, for example, the first long time you can just go and walk, you can clean the beds, you can level out the beds, you can look on cows and everything like this. More than this, uh, I do the inspiration by myself. So when I come and I have to inspect, for example, three cow, I can just go directly to the cow and find them where they are. And if we need a specific uh, cow, for example, uh, may, uh, she has been milked by, uh, with failures, or uh, maybe she uh, looks like she starts to get uh, sit, sick or mastitis, we can just go directly to find her. We don't have to go around here and search for her. So it's, it's safe a lot of time on our farm. Yep. Thank you. So we've done it very well. Thank you very much.